Hello and welcome everyone to another Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am going for a walk in a long, shall I say, a path which has all these nice trees. I was here a little while ago, but you wouldn't recognise it now because how much the leaves have grown since then. Now, I'm recording this on Wednesday the 20th of May, but I'm holding it back for a couple of days because I'm having a couple of days off releasing videos. I want to accumulate a few and be a few days ahead. That's how I like to do things. Otherwise, uh, I get fatigued by it all. Mentally, I get fatigued by it all. I end up thinking, oh shit, I'm under pressure. What can I talk about? And then I don't have anything to talk about. And then I go out and I do many takes and I don't like them. So I want to try and get ahead. So, and excuse me, being a bit breathless, I'm going uphill. All right, so where was I? Yes. Today, what I would like to talk about is how um, the uh, how communism took over the world. So this is part of the Lurgy Lockdown Diaries. Cue the titles. Yes, how communism took over the world. How it just so turned out that old Stefan. Basil Molyneux, yep, that's his middle name. Sounds daft, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. How Stefan Basil Molyneux was right when he said right, that um, the Lurgy virus was just, um, what you call it, a means of spreading communism around the world, that a real disease was communism. Now, how did I come to this conclusion? Well, it's obvious. It's been hidden in plain sight, been staring us in the face all this time what did we do in the world what did the world do the world decided oh china has come up with a an ideal policy with how to deal with this in the short term i know what we'll do we'll adopt china's policy <laughs> yes we adopted government policy from a commie country and we adopted it like it's our own now, we adopted relaxed versions of them. So, my door is not welded shut. There are conditions that I can go out and go for walks. I'm not, I'll probably be fined if I get too close to people. There be snitches, etc. that sort of thing. But it's still a soft version of the hard version of what China did nevertheless. It's still a lockdown. And if it's not full house arrest, of course it is for some people I mean built up areas more of course than it would be for people in rural areas more so in some countries less so in others but nevertheless the whole world turned communist we all have communist government policy in action in every country well there's a few that don't and who'd ever have thunk it a few months back who'd ever have thought that Sweden would be only one of a very small minority of countries to not adopt communist policy. You know, <laughs> I know. Ridiculous, isn't it? Oh, yes. Cruel irony is a fickle mistress. Who said that? I don't know. Some brainy academic scholar who said that? Write it in the, uh, in the box below, I'd like to know. And no, it wasn't, it wasn't Stephen Fry in comic strip form in an episode of Viz, right? He obviously, or Viz, whoever, obviously nicked that from somewhere else. Right. So, yes, this is um, something that we have um, to talk about because one of the uh, concerns, right, is when I actually look and I think, right, well, what other forms of communism have we got to look out for here? Right, you know, are you allowed to question the lockdown? This is another thing. Now, some people are questioning the lockdown. People like Peter Hitchens and people like that are. There's also, um, I mentioned him before, I can't remember his name now, a British multi-millionaire who lives in Monaco who's attempting to take the, court, to the, the, take the country to court in a judicial review, which, of course, he's trying to partially crowdfund, but he said he's happy to do it with his own money. He only wants to put it on a crowdfunding um, source so that he can, um, you know that other people feel like they are con contributing to it. But let's know, of course, he doesn't really need the money. So he's not a con man, he's not a Brian Rose, thankfully. We've got him. 
We've also got people like Lord Sumption, um, Lord Jonathan Sumption, who uh, is, of course, um, now somewhat of a wrong thinker, somewhat of a pariah, despite being a member of the UK Supreme Court, you know, being one of the highest ranking legal people in the country, coming out, speaking out against it. And of course, they've given him the, the wrong thinker treatment, haven't they? You see, we've got the problem as well that um, YouTube don't want you talking about um, the lurgy, which is why I don't use the word, um, well, why I very seldom, shall I say, use the word that, that begins with a C, that sounds a bit like crown with extra O's in it, right? One of the reasons why I seldom use the word in these videos is because, um, if you talk about it, you've got to say what I like to call the bad who say. Yes, the good who being um, Roger Daltrey, um, Pete Townsend, Keith Moon, John Entwistle, John Entwistle. <laughs> a bit of a bit of a mouthful that last one. And then, of course, you've got uh, the bad who, Mr. Tedros, communist man from Ethiopia, Ethiopia in the pocket of China. Good old bit of you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Corruption going on there, and as a result of it, um, China says jump. And um, the WHO said how high. China says, suck my cock, bitch. Tedros gets on his knees, right? <laughs> Fuck, I don't care what language I'm using. Yeah? I'm just telling it as I see it, right? Now, of course, if you then decide that you do not agree with or believe anything the World Ill Health Disorganization says, then you are at the behest of the wrong think police who tell you that you're wrong and you must be censored and our fact checkers and finger waggers will come after you. Well, then I say, okay, Taiwan is a sovereign nation. Taipei is a capital city. It is not answerable to China in any way whatsoever. And China does not have the right to go there. And if China does, it's invading a foreign country. Well, that doesn't go with what the bad who say. So therefore, I should be disappeared from YouTube for having that opinion, despite the fact that I can prove it with a map. The most up-to-date world political map, I can prove this to be true. Doesn't matter. It goes against the WHO. And you tell me that that isn't communism coming in through the back door with its tentacles and its tendrils, insinuating its way in insidiously into our lives. And we all now are at the behest of a communist-style government policy in all the different countries that are in the world, unless you're lucky enough to be Swedish, right? And we've got communist YouTube, as well as our communist governments and communist Google and communist Facebook, right? All of whom um, are, what you call it, uh, a combination of at least uh, the American ones are old ex-Obama people who um, don't like Trump and therefore would probably rather turn into communists than, um, than basically agree with anything he says. And of course the British um, political end, the Lib Dems, you know, the ones who had the head cut off the snake because they were going to try and stop Brexit despite the fact that it was an act of democracy they were going to try and stop and they lost their leader now they're discredited like a joke party while well, where have they ended up they're all fucking working for facebook and um this is what we're going to deal with so so yes of course i'm going to slag them off and of course i'm going to slag them off on their platforms and fuck them <laughs> i don't care what they're going to do cut me off make me invisible i'll find a way of surviving in the analog world if i need to of course i will I took time out from being on those platforms. Right, so that's the thing. So these are the problems that we're having to deal with. Um, are we now, as wrong thinkers, because we don't agree with communism, because we don't want communism to take over the world, are we now wrong for slagging off China? 
and saying, you know, well, China at the moment. Now, of course, there are who's the as ADV podcast, ADV China. I forget their name now. One bloke is American, goes by the nickname Sea Milk, has a channel called Lao Wai 86. The other bloke um, is called Winston. He's South African. He's always wearing a suit, yeah. and he's um he uh, has a channel of his own called Serpent ZA. They have a channel called ADV China where, well, until recently, they were going around um, riding motorcycles um, while with microphones inside their uh, their helmets while having GoPros on their head, having conversations, talking about social issues of China. Right. Anyway, according to them, the Chinese have now brainwashed all their unthinking um, communist drones, all 1.6 billion of them, into believing that the virus came from America. They've banned all foreigners and they are the most racist and the most xenophobic um, nation and regime on earth without question, right? And I'm thinking that, yeah, there will be pedantic idiots out there saying, oh, but your, your stuff was made in China, Niall, you know, how can you possibly slag off China? All your things were made in China. Well, this is the problem, isn't it? All that stuff is made in China. Um, it can't be helped. How else do we get the message out? Do we just not get the message out? Because it just so turns out that all the gadgets that we're using were made in China. All right, well, let's not slag them off then, eh? Let's just let's keep this problem going. Um, if we slag them off and we bring um, awareness to it and we bring attention to it, then we can have it. That in the future, we, um, like I say, if you happen to have a Huawei phone, well, I'm not going to judge you. Maybe you'll just, you know, when it wears out or whatever, and you're due for your next upgrade, get a Samsung. Fair enough. Have a Huawei until it's um, not usable anymore, and then upgrade to a Samsung afterwards. Fair enough. Slow phasing out. We hope Apple, and we hope a lot of these other companies, are now going to move their factories out of China, and bit by bit, if we all put pressure like this, and we can get some kind of anti-communist sentiment going as we go into the future, without the far right coming along and hijacking it, right? then we're going to be all right. This is what we need to do. And we need to basically make sure that whatever we do, if we are speaking in an anti-communist, or shall I say more specifically anti-collectivist way as we go into the future, the one thing that we really do have to make sure of is that the, um, you know, the, the Nazis, the, the white nationalists, the, uh, you know, all those people, that sort of fringe organisation, that they don't hijack us. And although I'm pro-freedom of speech, if I see any of my threads being hijacked by white nationalists or by full-on far-right people, um, well, I'm going to delete them if I see them. If I don't see them, that's the only reason why I haven't deleted them, because I will not be inviting them people because my final thought on this today is that I don't go by the left and right models anymore, right? I go by individualism versus collectivism. I do not wish to go into a world where we have to swap one form of collectivism for another form of collectivism. There are a lot of people who are right-wing who make videos and I don't agree with them either. I'm not an ethno-nationalist. I don't really... Um, give a fuck about or you know care one way or the other about when it comes to things like um white genocide i don't really care about stuff like that i don't care what race or what color um or what culture any of us are i really don't care one way or the other but um you know um it depends entirely on how it's done i mean for instance you know if, if certain countries and certain cultures have gone into rapid population replacement that has caused a shock to the system which then has the secondary effect of causing indigenous flight from certain areas of the suburbs of the city say for instance which then causes cultural balkanization rather than cultural you know cross-pollination and as a result of that you end up with political correctness then coming along and, and saying well you can't talk about this if you do you're a racist and the people who want to talk about this are not racists then what happens is they create a secondary problem where the people like tommy robinson come along and say well the mainstream didn't listen to you don't worry we'll listen to you and that's how it happens the end of a wedge i've been watching this now for the last year uh, uh two years or whatever and so we want to make sure that as we are saying, no, we're not going to fucking stand for communism, right? 
we also do not want to stand for its right-wing collectivist counterpart, right? You get me. So that's why I say we've got to be sensible about this. We've got to avoid the extreme when it comes to stuff like this. We've got to not play the identity group whatsoever when it comes to stuff like this, right? We've got to say, yes, I'm an individual. Um, I'm happy to meet every other person who identifies as an individual wherever I go. Um, but I don't care who they are, what colour they are, what gender they are, what sexual orientation they are. If they wish to play the identity politics game, they wish to be collectivist or they wish to be communist or they wish to be fascist, then I'm not going to have any time for them, whoever they are. I don't mind a bit of healthy disagreement. That's how we get things done and that's how the world goes round and that's how we progress in this world. My God. I've been a little bit less ummy than usual and I've been on somewhat of a roll. Something seems to have gone right with my brain today. All right. I shall uh, leave it at that, everyone. Um, now, of course, on this day, I am deciding I'm going to be making future videos to store up stuff. So I think I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to come up with another video immediately after this one, which is good because I'm about to leave the path with the trees around me. And I'm about to go into the great outdoors. So I'll be able to create a change of scenery. So see you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Also join the Facebook group, follow us on Twitter and subscribe on BitChute. It's early days for us yet, so please help this channel grow. And it will be gratefully appreciated if you do.